from the Church Times the 20th of November 1936 Who lives upstairs mum son we live upstairs then who lives downstairs mum we live downstairs too but he could not believe it not one of the children who had been cramped and cabined in the tenement houses of South London did believe it they had been used to living five in a room and sleeping three in a bed when they came to the new houses, they could not understand the idea of separate bedrooms. They had never seen a whole house that is a home. So a church army sister told me at the opening of the wonderful little estate built by the church army at Mitcham, which was opened on Monday afternoon. In Sunshine Way, 51 new cottages have been built, and they have been specially designed for families that are not touched by the slum clearance schemes, the families, that is, which are too large for the tiny flats of the mean streets too poor to pay high rents and, some of them, too sickly to thrive in the great blocks of central London. All the families come from overcrowded rather than specifically, slum, areas, and have had, therefore, little hope of a new home under government schemes. Some have been waiting for proper accommodation for three years, some for as long as seven years. Before the official opening of the estate, a meeting was held for tenants and friends of the church army in Welcome Hall, the religious and social centre for the new buildings. Prebendary Carlyle, who, as he said, is, getting on for ninety, not out, took the whole meeting on his shoulders as soon as he entered the hall. He knew everybody. He chaffed everybody. He put the praise for all the work on everyone but himself. Above all, he made everybody laugh and feel at home. He called suddenly upon workers hidden at the back of the hall to come and give their own little part of the story of the building of the cottages. He insisted that church army sisters should tell their own tales about the social and religious side of the work. And, by the way, how splendidly these workers speak at a moment's notice. They have none of the formalities of the trained speaker. But their straightforward, simply phrased stories come from a store of experience and a fund of humor and understanding. Mr. F. M. Elgood, chairman of Church Army Housing, Limited, related the history of the estate. The cottages were built, he said, for large families with small incomes. There were 51 new cottages, and among the new tenants, in them were 277 children. The hall was built so that there might be a place for a Sunday school for the children, a meeting place for mission services, for clubs and for social gatherings. The speaker explained how greatly the church army was concerned with the problem of rent. With its complementary system of loan stock and voluntary donations, Church Army Housing was able to build cottages, without help of government subsidy, and to let them at differential rents. The cottages at Mitcham all have three bedrooms and some of them have four. The highest rent, inclusive of rates, is 12 shillings and 3 pence, and the lowest is 8 shillings. But the majority are let for 9 shillings and 7 pence a week. Care is taken that the rent shall be small if the father of the family has to travel far to his work. There are special houses with sunshine roofs that is, open-air shelters for families with a tubercular member. Help is given with beds and blankets for the families whose ramshackle furniture from ramshackle tenements is fit only for the fire. The new furniture is paid for from weekly savings. The church army shield was unveiled by Lord Horder. The Bishop of Kingston, acting for the bishop of the diocese, stood, pastoral staff in hand, at the center of the estate, and blessed the houses and all the tenants in them. Children crowded round Sunshine Way for the ceremony. Tenants were at their windows or standing in their gardens, their well-prized new possessions. Some of the families from Camberwell, Lambeth and Southwark had, hardly seen any soil for years. All, in the five short weeks of tenancy, had made gallant efforts to tidy and to lay out their bit in spite of the fact that slabs of cement belonging to cellars of former buildings were found heaped up a few feet beneath the surface of the gardens, while other places seemed to have been the depository for old China for the whole of Mitcham during at least a hundred years. The people are settling down now, said a church army sister to me. It is always a bit of a job at the beginning. Children, eight in a family, who have lived in two tiny rooms, are inclined to be frightened of a dark, upstairs. They are used to going to bed in the living room. And, of course, there is the problem of furniture. Most of these families have had room only for bedroom furniture in their old places. Now they want tables and dresses and chests of drawers, and the cost is a terrible strain on the tiny resources. There's the Smith family, now. 
There are ten of them, eight children. They lived in two tiny rooms, and had to have a double bed in the kitchen. It stretched right from the wall to the fireplace, so there was no room for a table. They always had their meals off the bed. Then there is the Jones family. Some of the children slept on a bedstead. And the rest lay round it on the floor.